Greetings from the Apocalypse. So in the first part of our starting a quadruple chain, I showed you how to put the two links together and bend them up to a little cup and then thread a little binding wire in there so you can hold on to the little stinker because when you're weaving chain and you're first starting out, you're like, click, click. It's, it's really annoying. So today I'll show you how to actually start doing the weaving of the links using uh, a very nice, highly polished scriber. And by the way, uh, I don't talk about this in the video, so I'll discuss it here. Highly polishing your scriber makes an enormous difference for weaving your chain. It makes it go faster and easier to a degree that like you would be shocked actually um, at the difference it makes. Whenever I see student weaving chain, I take a look at the scriber and if it isn't nice and highly polished, I'll go and use a little like Fabuluster or on it. Uh, Fabuluster is, is just a type of steel polish and that's what I use um, on all my steel tools and stuff like that. But usually anything that will give it a nice high shine that you have in the studio is better than letting it be icky, okay? So next time you're weaving chain, take a good long look at your scriber and make sure it's at a high polish. If it isn't, it'll repay your efforts by like a billion, well, a million, uh, to have it really polished and shiny, okay? So today we start weaving. Now, do you have your scriber? And there they are. Yeah. Oh, because it's a little smaller. Yeah, I think that we're going to need, I mean, we've got this, this scriber, which may be too fat, and then we've got this, which is a little thinner, so let's just try it out and we'll see which one keeps. So. Yeah, this is perfect. So you see how you go through from one side to open it up. And then I'm going to go through also from the other side to open them up. So then you see how they're relatively even, all sort of poofed out with a little opening because you have to open them up a little bit or else you're not going to be able to get that next link through there. Okay. So I'm going to take my next link. Usually what I do is I grab it either with my chain nose or my round nose pliers, just like that. And I slide it through and bend it up a little bit. Okay, just like that. And then I'm gonna put another one through going the other way. Just like that, you see that right on top of? Okay, and then you bend it up. Almost, because I mean, this is really what starts it. Okay, so this is what you have to start with. It looks lumpy and bumpy, but don't be fooled. It will eventually be beautiful. Because the only thing you have to remember now about putting, uh, about opening the space for the next link is that you're going through the last two links and you're always going to cross. If you look down in the center, you see these two lines right here, here and here. I'm going to keep touching them. Boop, boop. You see those right there? Each time you're adding a new link, you're going to cross those two lines. So wherever those two lines are, your link is going to go the other way. That's how you know once if you've set it down and left it for a month or a week or five minutes for people like me, um, how you remember where you are and where to go next. Okay? So I'm going to put it through just like this to open up the pathway. And you see how I've gone through two links but four ends. You see what I mean? Just like that. If I pull it out, you can see that it's crossing those double lines, right? So you open it right there. I'm like slowing this down because this is the really important part to remember where to put it. You can see it, right, Susan? Yeah. Okay, so now I'm gonna put a link right through there. Now, if you've stretched your links and the ends are a little too fat to go through, you can squeeze them a little bit. I don't like to squeeze them all the way closed, but it's kind of a balance between how much you open the side and how much you squeeze the link. Now I find with smaller chains, 
that I need to grab the link with my pliers, not just use my fingers. I find it more accurate, you know what I'm saying? Um, the bigger the chain, it might not be such a big deal, but for little chains, I feel like you really have to do this. So, so like if I look at that end, to me that end looks a little bit too fat to go through my opening. So I'm just going to slide it down here. You see that, that flat area in your pliers at the bottom? You can take it and just squeeze it just like that. So you see how it's not completely closed, but it's a little more narrow. So for the rest of your links, you probably want to do that kind of a shape, okay? Because if you get too much of like a bow tie look, it's too hard to get it through there, okay? So now that I have it squeezed, you can take it, you see, and slide right through there. So take a nice long look at that because that's how, how you do it. You slide it through there and then I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to bend the two ends up toward the top so that it looks like this. Yep, and then the scriber's next. So you see my two lines in here on the interior? That tells me that my next link needs to go this way because if you think you can remember which way you went last time, forget it, you'll go crazy. Okay, so you see down inside there, you see those two links? Yeah. The parallel lines. Each time you add a link, you're always crossing the two that. Lines. Yep. And that's what tells you each time, you know what I mean, which direction okay. is right. Do you open up that one that you just finished, like right now? Right now, because I need to go through to, to go across there, so I'm gonna take my little scriber and open up that little pathway. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Just like that. Right. Yeah. You see? Yeah. I haven't made a quadruple link in so long. When I get a nice close up, I'll just pull it out and it's like making a porno. So you're always putting the links through the four and not the two. Yeah, because it's the four ends. It's yeah. two links. But if you think of it as two ends on each side. Yeah because that's really what makes the difference between the quadruple and the double. If you're doing the double, you just go in one direction and you go you know, every two links. The quadruple, right. you're going through two links this way, two links this way, two yeah, links this way, okay? So I'll put this one through and we'll do one more just so you can really see it. And then from that point on, it's just do it and do it and do it. Yeah. Yeah. I like to think of it as contemplative, but you know, whatever. Um, how was the doctor? Yeah, I think a slightly more elongated shape with your links um, will be easier to weave. Yeah, I see. Yeah. And do you have any links that are fused but not shaped yet? Because. Okay. When you make some more links, just call me back and I'll do a demo on like what I think the easiest shape is to weave. Well, I have it in gold. Yeah, okay, we'll do that. Yeah, this okay. is just, I'm just starting this in silver. I always start mine in silver. That The first little part of it is gonna be hidden by the termination anyway, so there's right. no reason not to save yourself a little bit of gold. Okay, bend up. You look down inside, you see the two parallel lines right there. And you know that that's what you have to cross. So then you're going to go across like this. Okay, so take a look. You see what I've done. Okay. So if, if you have a gold one done, let me just show you what I think is like the ideal shape that is easiest to, thank you very much. And how much how long of a termination? The terminations are usually about like so, but there's no real rule. You know what I mean? It's just whatever you think looks good. Okay. I don't like them too short because sometimes they look a little stumpy on the end, but okay. you can experiment, you know, and sort of choose you, what you like. Can you cut, put it, cut it at the end if you decide it's too long? Absolutely. Okay.
Okay, so here's my length. Uh, maybe you can come in and get real close. I'm gonna put my round nose pliers in pretty much all the way at the end, okay? And I'm gonna stretch it nice and parallel. So you see that shape right there? Then you slide it off, squeeze in the middle. Okay, so you've got that. Now, if you were doing like a double, that might be enough, but for the quadruple where it's more tightly woven, I also take the one end, and usually I go all the way down here on the little flat part on your pliers. Can you see what I'm saying? Like right here, like so. Jeanette, remember when we used to put the two sticks together and pinch it in the center? Uh-huh. Yeah, that's a pain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's what happens when you figure out one way to do it and instead of continuing to experiment, you just say, well, that worked, so I'm gonna keep doing that. And that's what gives you techniques like that, where it could easily be better, yes. but people, and faster, and, faster and happier, and whatever. Right. Okay. But that little tip that you're giving us right now about getting it, you know, pinching it. Just like that. So you see, it's not pinched completely closed. I'll put it down on here and you can get a close up. For weaving a quadruple, that is the ideal shape because it's not too rounded on the ends. If it's real rounded on the ends, you're stretching and stretching and trying to get it through. So you really kind of want that more elongated rather than like a real dog bone right. or bow tie-esque. Because I'm doing a, a single loop over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you make the ends too rounded and big, even with a single, it's a pain in the ass to try to weave So I them. still have to pinch it a little. Maybe, yeah. Or, ju or just pull a little bit more when you're making the original length so that, in so that instead of them being so poofy yeah. on the end, they're a little more elongated. It'd be okay. easier. Okay. Okay. okay? Thank you. Yeah.